Hi, this is Shantae and welcome to Just How I Planted. I am the owner and creator of the Grow Girl Planters. You might know me on Facebook and Instagram. If you don't know me there, go ahead and get to know your girl and follow me at Just How I Planted. Today, we are talking about my watering routine, but not just a boring video about me watering my houseplants. No, we are going to talk about the best kinds of water for your houseplants, how to avoid overwatering your house plants and I'm even trying out a new product that is going to help avoid overwatering your plants because that is the biggest demise for your house plants and we're also going to touch on what nutrients I use when I'm doing my watering routine so if that's something that you want to see go ahead and stick around don't forget to like comment and subscribe and let's get into this video so firstly, how do you even know when it's time to water your houseplants? Overwatering is one of the biggest ways that we kill our houseplants. It is best to underwater your plants rather than overwater because your plants can come back from underwatering, not so much overwatering. Overwatering can lead to root rot and you don't want that. So there are a couple things that I do first before I even start to water my plants. There are a couple things that you can do to see if it's time to water your plants. And one of the main things I do is I lift the pot. If the pot is very light, you know it is time to water your plant. Of course, when there's more water in the plant, the plant is going to be heavier. So you can lift the pot, check to see how heavy the pot is. Next, you can do a simple finger test where you put your finger in the soil and you can see if, if there's no soil on your finger, then it is dry and it's time to water your plant. Whereas if you put your finger in the soil and soil comes off on your finger, the soil is still moist and it is not yet time to water your plant. If you're still unsure, you can get yourself a handy dandy moisture meter. I will link it below. You can get one right on Amazon. You stick it down in the soil and sorry about the lighting, but it is confirming that yes, it is indeed time to water this plant. So before I get into watering my house plants, I just wanna go over a couple of the ways that I avoid overwatering my plants. I hope I don't lose anybody with the first one. And it, it, it's funny, but it's like the absolute truth. So the number one way I avoid overwatering my house plants is to have way too many plants. When I first got my my plants I got them last year I think and, and I had like three plants and I watered my, my oh plants my gosh. can't wait can't wait to water my plants again a week is it's too far so as I got more and more and more plants of course it is harder for me to keep up with watering them and therefore I'm not over watering my plants so that's the first tip let me know below what what your favorite way is to avoid over watering your plants the next thing I do to avoid overwatering my plants is to bottom water. Bottom watering is basically just letting your plant sit in a bowl or a basin, even a bathtub if you have a lot of plants and you just want to put them all in the bathtub. I just um, put water in the bottom and then I let the plants drink as much as they want. So of course I have my nutrient water and I have a few plants in here. And also, so not only does this help with overwatering, but it also helps with fungus gnats because when you overwater your plants and the um, soil stays moist, the fungus gnats like to lay their eggs within the moist soil. So with bottom watering, you have the first inch remains dry and the plant is absorbing as much water as it wants. So I usually just let the plant sit in the water for maybe like 20 or 30 minutes whenever I remember really and then when I come back to it I can feel that it's much heavier so that is one of the ways that I avoid overwatering my plants the third way I avoid overwatering my plants is to use self-watering pots I got these pots off of Amazon and I just fill the bottom up and there are like two wicking strings down there and so the water the plant is able to water itself as it needs and I noticed that all my plants that are in self-watering planters they seem happier <laughs> they seem happier than all the rest of my plants um, and so yes that is the third way that I avoid overwatering my plants 
Okay, so my fourth tip for not overwatering your plants is to use LECA. LECA is a lightweight, um, a lightweight soil, soilless medium that allows the plants to self water. So you just put water in the bottom and then the plants will wick the water up as it needs. So I have my fiddle leaf fig here in LECA and Fiddle leaf figs are said to be difficult plants to care for, and I wanted this plant to have as much or as little water as it wanted, so I have it here in LECA. I have several of my plants in LECA, and I absolutely love LECA, but it is heavy. It is heavy. This pot, it probably weighs a million pounds. I don't know. It is it's heavy, and so this pot is going to remain here because I'm not about to drag this pot anywhere else, which leads me to the sample product that I want to be testing out, that I'm going to be testing out today. Okay, so I am going to be trying out, as you see the bag is open, I've already tried it out. I tried it out on one of my cactuses. I have a cactus that I've repotted and there was no drainage hole. Sometimes you see these cute pots and there's no drainage and you're like, I'm not about to kill my plant over this pot. But I added some arc light. I'm gonna be doing the into same the thing bottom with this of that Asia. pot. And so arc light is a recycled product. It is um, like gravel, but it's made from recycled plastic. So it's taking plastic out of the landfills and I am big on recycling. My husband's like, I'll be doing this recycling all the time. But anyway, so it is reusable. And you might be thinking, well, why can't I just put rocks in the bottom of my pots like I've been doing? Because it is much lighter. It is it is three times lighter than LECO, aka expanded clay. It provides great root support and you're saving the world, okay? <laughs> you're keeping plastic out of the landfill. So what I'm going to do per the instruction is to fill one inch of this pot. I got this pot from home goods. So it's very heavy, but there's no drainage. Uh, and so, as we know, if our soil is not able to drain correctly, all the water will sit and it will cause root rot and your plant will die and we don't want that. So I will be filling this pot with the arc light and we're going to get started now. Okay, so you can get up close and watch me and pour it out. All right, so I am going to be repotting. I'm starting to transition some of my plants back inside. So this has been sitting outside, but now that it is fall and I'm going to be bringing it back inside, I'm going to want my stuff to be in prettier pots. So this is still in a nursery pot because I bought it and I'm like, I'm not messing up my good pots outside. Anyway, so I have this um, in the pot and I just have it still in the soil. And so of course we have the one inch of arc light. So that's where the water is going to sit and, um, it, and it's gonna provide good drainage. Not drainage. <laughs> it's going to prevent the roots from sitting in water and that's what I want. Okay, so off screen I went ahead and filled the rest of the soil in. I think I'm going to go ahead and top the soil with the remaining arc light. I went on Amazon and like let me look at the reviews let me see what the people are saying not only can you use it for drainage but it is also a prettier less messy alternative because I'm bringing the sand on back inside for which, winter I don't know what type of things are living in the soil <laughs> and so soil is not cheap so I'm not about to replace all my soil because it's not time so anyway before I've topped that, I went ahead and I mixed, this is my nutrient water, but I went ahead and put some neem oil and some castor soap in here and I'm going to water the soil because that will prevent, I mean that will kill anything living in the soil, um, pest and any type of fungus or whatever. So I'm just going to water the soil like so. I'm 
I want to be careful how much water I'm putting in this pot because there's no drainage and I know the arc light is in here like up to here so I want to make sure I don't go above that now this might be a struggle this is the one gallon bag that they sent me and so I was able to repot a um this is like an eight inch pot and then I did a smaller the smaller cactus and I don't think it's going to be enough so I'll have to order some more but I'm going to use what I have And I definitely just saw something just spring out. <laughs> so I'm gonna have to order some more and we're gonna cover that and that'll be that. So I moved my plant back outside. <laughs> um, so arc light it's not just like a soil cover and um, you can use it to prevent, um, you can use it to help with pots, you know, for better drainage, but you could also use it instead of like So now that I got freaked out by that bug I saw, I'm like, should I just convert everything? <laughs> just get rid of the soil so I know for sure there are no bugs in there. And because it is, a lot lighter than LECA. Oh, and then so I was asking the Arclight rep, I'm like, so why? Why use Arclight instead of LECA? Like LECA does the same thing, doesn't it? And he said, but you don't have to rinse your Arclight. Like you have to do, you have to rinse your LECA. LECA um, forms a buildup from all of the um, minerals and such things found in the water. For example, um, this philodendron birkin, I have it in LECA. And if you look, there's like a white film over it. And that film is just minerals that are in the water um, that build up on the LECA. So you have to flush your LECA every so often. And if I'm being honest, I really don't ever flush my LECA. <laughs> really, unless I like take it. If I'm washing the leaves or something, I take it in the shower with me or if they, I put it outside of the rain. Otherwise, I'm not really flushing my LECA. And so that really that really appealed to me with the arc light that I could avoid that whole step. So we're in um we're in September now. And so if I start now, I can convert all of my stuff or most of my stuff into LECA. Um, or arc light and just get rid of the soil altogether. Other things to consider are maybe using terracotta pots. Terracotta pots will help to, um, they have, they're more porous and so it's not going to allow your plant to just sit in water for a long time so you're less likely to get root rot. Um, another tip I have is to group plants with similar watering needs together. So for example, all my cacti, they don't need to be watered as often. So if I just all put them together, I know that if one needs to be watered, more than likely they all need to be watered. And I'm not going all over the house like a crazy person trying to figure out what needs to be watered. So I can have my plants that require a lot of moisture together, um, just like I have the plants that don't need as much watering together. We didn't do much watering in this video, but we did talk about all the important tips for watering your house plants. And I really uh, appreciate you guys hanging in there with me. Once again, my name is Shantae, which is how I plant it. Oh, and guess what you guys, I have plant merch, plant merch, plant bay. So I will also link this plant bay t-shirt in the description below. I hope that you are able to check it out. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And I will see you in the next video. Happy planting.